Hello everyone and welcome back to my RP2000 career in Kerbal Space Program 1.8.1 with Realism Overhaul. This is meant to be a simple career mode for Realism Overhaul, as simple as possible, because Realism Overhaul is already quite complicated. And it starts you off in the year 2000 as a little startup company, and hopefully we can do great things. But we'll have to see, because I, so far during testing, have not gotten pretty far in the tech tree. I've sort of hung around here and made sure this part works, but there's a lot to go on, of course. And again, I've already indicated that I might need to make more parts and figure out other things, but we'll see. Uh, the balance is, you know, questionable. Uh, so I've been uh, configuring this particular career tech tree, and the contracts are not configured by me. They're uh, from the RP0 in 1.1.3 package. So that is where those contracts are from. And for now, I don't think I'll tweak them too much. We'll see how everything else works out around them. Now, last time we almost got into Oriole for rocket, but I didn't, uh, we fell short. I think rather than launching that rocket again, I'll warp to the completion of basic rocketry and try to build a new rocket with that. I'll leave the trying to get to orbit with the S2.720 engine to potential other players. <laughs> so you can have fun trying to get the most optimal rocket with the start part. So you can certainly get into orbit with them, but you'll have to see how well you can do that. But for now, I'll just proceed on since we really do need to test out the further parts of the tech tree and see that they work. So we've got basic rocketry now, and so we should have new engines. One thing that you would get if you use the US probes pack from Raider Nick is simple probes like Vanguard, and those would help you with communications because uh, those have built, uh, built in communications, so you don't need the Wisp antenna, but they're a little bit heavier than the sounding rocket core we have here. The sounding rocket core is very much like the Explorer 1 in this whole setup. Uh, except it's actually heavier, <laughs> weirdly. It's 22 kilograms in this case, but we've got a lot of science on it, so. Yep, it is uh, basically your Explorer 1 thing, and it sure looks like it. But now, instead of using these rather inefficient engines, we are going to try and use a more efficient engine. And basic rocketry, if you just have the simple, uh, sorry, small rockets pack, uh, we get the Ether engine, which is a vacuum engine, but only gives you 3.3 kilonewtons. But it might be uh, good to replace this stage with that. Uh, these are each 10 kilonewtons, but they don't last for very long. So I think maybe we'll consider that. It's a fairly small unlock cost. And here, the Delphin engine, whoops. The Delphin engine is a surface engine. You can see it as a sea level ISP and 31.8 kilonewtons, uh, that's from Astros Rocket 3. There's the Lightning Engine from Firefly Alpha, and that is more expensive and more powerful. It's a vacuum engine, uh, 322 vacuum ISP, 70 kilonewtons. And the Delphin Engine does require electric charge, so note that that's a potential drawback there. Uh, the others are, that's electric pump driven and the rest are gas generator driven except for the ether engine which is, uh, which will be pressure fed it says there. That does have multiple ignitions so that's good. Uh, Reaver 1 has is a sea level engine, very powerful at this stage, 184 kilonewtons. And these are the sure strut engines. This is a 100 Newton engine. This is not a RCS thruster, though it's based on an RCS thruster. Uh, so there's pressure fed as well, lots of ignitions. So we could probably put that up there. 313 seconds of vacuum ISP, so it's not bad. It's MH and Mon 3, uh, so storable fuels. This is just a hydrazine engine, so efficiency not good, but it's one kilonewton. And so very simple, cheap, uh, just uh, unlock. The unlocked cost is just 10, so that's your one kilonewton engine. And th these are larger engines. This is a still a vacuum engine, 33.3 .3 kilonewtons, MH and Mon 3, with alternate configurations for Air Z and UDMH should you want to use those, but I didn't really change the thrust or ISP. I, it's like one second difference either way, so I just dumped those in for the heck of it. and. 
didn't parse that out too much. And then we have Sky Force by Skyrora uh, from the Skyrora XL rocket. And this is a sea level engine with 79.7 kilonewtons, kerosene HTP, so a different mix. And the Skyrora vacuum, 306 vacuum ISP. And so that's just a vacuum version of the first one. Now that does get to a point where uh, technically you should get a discount. If you've already unlocked the sea level, when you unlock the vacuum, you should get a discount. But uh, I'll have to figure out how to do that and whether it needs the the RP0 plugin or not. Because RP0 used to do that. But if it needs the plugin, I might not be able to do that. We'll see. Okay, so it doesn't seem like... Uh, well, let's see. If basic... If unlocking basic rocketry now limits our thing. I haven't fixed any no, everything is still completely unlimited. We'll see. I don't know. I have a theory about why, even though I tried to limit the tanks, they still seem unlimited, but I don't have proof yet. Uh so one thing we could do is sort of make uh, move away from the sounding rocket core and try to make something a little bit bigger. Uh we could do the mystery goo, but maybe we should re reach orbit first and then think about those things. So we'll stick to this. And I like the idea of getting the ether engine here, which is nice and small but efficient. Uh, let's build the ether stage first and then think about the reaver one. So we're going to replace all these little model rocket motors. Now the ether engine uses kerosene and oxygen, so we'll have to, uh, so we can't have the RCS share the system. In a way, we might think of trying to make a rocket that we can use for more than just a Explorer One equivalent. You know, you might want to use this opportunity to test your main orbital rocket. You know, something that can carry some substantial payload up. Maybe a moon mission. But uh, I'll just stick to this. So we've got the high pressure tank. We need kerosene and oxygen. What does that give us? A lot, <laughs> actually. 6,000 meters, again, with this little probe, of course. So, all right. We still only have the cubes. Oh, we've got these RCS ports now with uh, basic rocketry. So these are, uh, you could have. It with hydrazine is just mob propellant. Hydrazine, HDP, nitrous oxide, helium, or nitrogen. So we'll have a bunch of those. And we could have little tanks at the bottom here. So by default, they're configured to hydrazine. The tech levels work. And so we are limited to tech level one until we get better technology. Now oh, that'll work for orientation. We could have the thrusters point down to help with fine-tuning things. I think I'll do that. We don't have a part limit as a frustration in stock that we don't need duplicated. And that was true of RP0 as well. I don't think we had a part limit. We had the mass limit. Okay, that's probably all right. Okay, so that's our little stage up there. What's IB? <laughs> Uh, that's a new one. FB, IB, I don't remember those. Oh, we want that node. This node decouples, this does not decouple. <laughs> well, okay, sometimes I do need to be reminded of that. That's, that's a nice one. I wonder who thought of that one. Okay, 0.8 is what we want at the top. Oh, here we can't make less than one meter. Suddenly we have a limitation. I don't know, sometimes. Okay, so uh, let's make the bottom of that one meter. Otherwise, the fairings aren't going to look right. We don't have a whole lot of choices on fairings. We've got the able fairing, interestingly enough. I think that's probably misplaced. I probably meant that to be in Engineering 101, not basic rocketry. Whoa. I don't know if I like having Ogai fairings here. I wish... Uh, I don't know why we don't have the conical fairings. Aren't those easier to make? Hmm. Ogai seems to be the basic
Whereas I would think that conical would be the easy one. Okay, we forgot to put the hydrazine in the tanks. That's important. We need that to be a service. Well, technically, I don't know if we need. Oh, yeah, hydrazine only goes in the heavier tanks anyway. Wow, that cut our delta V down. Oh, why did it go bigger? Okay, yeah, but that did cut our delta V down there. Okay, well, that's an awkward looking thing. <laughs> That's an awkward looking thing. I don't expect to need as big a tank if we're going to use a more efficient engine than the S2.720s. Uh, what we can do is use the ether engine as a standby since I don't want to unlock the engine unless we know what we need. It's got very high ISP. Obviously it's not going to have the thrust weight ratio here but it'll give us an idea of how much tankage we need for this and really right now this is scaled based on how big how small we can make the fairings and apparently we can't make them too small so we're looking maybe at a rocket that's only five tons we could use an engine that's anything above 60 kilonewtons potentially i don't want to deal with the electric charge thing though probably like Two to four of those Delphin engine would do the trick. I'll go with Sky Force for a change and we'll see how that works. Let's just have one and see uh, tanks. Yeah, I mean, that'll do the trick. We are a very stubby rocket. We should go with fins because we won't have roll control otherwise. But I still haven't put tweak scale in, so they're gonna be like that. Okay. This is not your normal orbital rocket here. Gamma. Sort of appropriate with the kerosene HTP to call this gamma. We just want to get our first satellite so we can find out what kind of wacky satellite contracts we'll get after that. Yeah, that's a singularly inelegant rocket. <laughs> SAS on throttle is up. Ignition. And launch. We just need to get into orbit. Now we seem to have quite a bit of funds given our, the cost of our rocket, but again, we will be needing to build bigger rockets, but also we need to spend on upgrading facilities. Right now, we don't have the tracking station upgrade for patched conics. Now, right now, I'm not playing with test flight. That's a whole other thing that once I get the test flight configurations for all of these, I should, I'll probably test that separately. Depends on how long this career mode goes without having a critical fault meaning there's something really wrong with the tech tree that will require a restart could just keep going in which case I'll just do the test flight thing in parallel because by the time I get the test flight thing done maybe the more interesting parts well, I don't know it could be interesting to dump it in and see what happens even midway such g-forces. Alright, um, separation, RCS on, and ignition. We continue. I don't think there would be any problem using stage recovery. And ultimately, if you get to the part where uh, KSB Interstellar is in the community tech tree, you might want to save up for that stuff. Yeah, and certainly the pricing of the engines at least. The tanks aren't worth that much, but the engines certainly are, so it should be worthwhile to bring those back. In the comments you can tell me what mods you want compatible. Uh, some mods again, uh, if they're old-timey legacy parts or parts that are from a very prominent manufacturer, those will go in the separate location on the tech tree, but if the parts are more generic, they can go in the main body of the tech tree. And mainly, I would like suggestions for stuff that can go in the main body of the tech tree. 
I don't know, we've gotten really far out, or I think Florida just got flooded. And shut down. So 300 by 159. Well, 298 by 159. Anyway, that should be good enough, right? Yes. First artificial satellite for us. Yes. Your first satellite. Not the world's first satellite. Your first satellite. Anyway. So, that is done. And this is not a relay satellite right now. That should be noted. So, it's not super useful here. I'll see if I can get one biome. But uh, we'll deorbit it. Eventually it'll lose power too. It doesn't have any way to replenish power. Okay, let's see here. Desert! Must be Australia. Transmit. Okay, we got the data. But we've lost communication. Smart ASS very frequently doesn't care whether you've lost communication or not. Uh, let's verify. Yep. <laughs> Just pretend you pre-programmed that. that. That's been a thing for... Smart ASS for a long time, though. Anyway, I'll deorbit it here. Maybe we can fish it out close to Hawaii or something. Well, no, I'll probably get all the way to the west coast. Okay, deorbit burn. It'll probably explode. It's definitely gonna explode. Let's check. We are unlocking heat shields, but we don't have them yet. I am rooting for this to explode, by the way, just to be clear. This might be a very useful engine, considering its ignitions. I don't know how many ignitions it's supposed to have. But, considering the mission profile for it, it seemed reasonable. I think uh, somebody noted that it has a longer nozzle. I'm, we'll have to fix that. Well, we've still got the sounding rocket core. Actually, the engine's doing pretty well, but then the engine should have a lot of heat tolerance. Okay. Well, disposed of. Very good. And Baja California in sight. Okay. So, let's see what contracts we get. Okay, we've got a collect science data from space around Earth contract. That's fairly straightforward. We might not have wanted to destroy that little thing yet. Um, milestone contracts. Lunar flyby, lunar impactor, and lunar orbit. So if you played RP0, this should be familiar. But let's pick up uh, the science data from space contract and see about, there's a specific orbiter of the moon contract. But there's a polar orbit contract here. I like polar orbits. There's an equatorial orbit contract. That's not too bad either. They don't pay a huge amount, but it's good practice. I don't really... I, in real life, I don't think the failure is more than the payment, but uh, I guess they could sue you and really make some, some uh, wild claims about the value of the thing or something. I don't know. Um, we're launching from Cape Canaveral. I think the polar one is probably better. Yeah. Let's try that. Okay, so that's what we'll do. We'll get some science data. It just needs to have an antenna that can generate power, looks like. I do want to see whether they request more than that, because the way that they request new parts was altered in RP0, and I've copied that alteration. But I don't know if it still works, so... We're sort of waiting for them to request maybe a thermometer on the thing or something like that. And right now they haven't. So I wonder if that's working or not. Okay, well one thing we can't do is use this Explorer 1 type core anymore because we at least need to provide power. So we need to generate power and this cannot do that. Uh, in fact, our only solar panels right now are the ones on the CubeSats. So um again if you have other mods that will be different pinnacle nope one meter well all right so we're stuck with uh one meter fairing no matter what and we'll just work with that i don't like this one for the cube set let's this tank now becomes 
a cylindrical tank, less length. So, okay, we will put more stuff in though. I would like a relay antenna so that this satellite that we put in polar orbit can be usable. Now it's sticking out. Technically, I meant for it to tuck in and poke out. Basically, it was meant to be flush with the top and then pop out. Yeah. Extend antenna. But I didn't quite make it pop out enough, so I'll just for the sake of making it look right keep it poked out like that from the start okay and then we have other antennas like these simple antennas but I think the one relay dish will be enough and the helix antenna works by popping out just fine but that is I believe not a relay antenna yes that is direct longer range than the other simple antennas though Now this relay antenna tends to use a lot of power, I've noticed. So I'm going to fill up a lot of this with batteries. I'll just go with the... actually, we'll skip the thermometer. We'll just go with the accelerometer since it's biome, surface biome dependent. We, maybe we should have the goo. Let's build something a little bit bigger and strap some goo onto this. Shoot. While we are here, uh, maybe it's better at the bottom. The goo containers are pretty big. Okay, fine. Let's skip the goo for now. That's mission creep. Okay, so what I would like to do is on action group one, have the solar panels deploy. Toggle solar panels and also have the relay antenna extend. And action group two can be for the accelerometer. Technically, this should be enough. I don't feel super good about this though. Maybe we should uh, keep the possibility of going to the moon in mind. And with that in mind, maybe get something that can deliver. 12,000 meters per second at least. So, and I think we'll go with two of the Skyforce engines and skip the fins because then we'll have roll control. This is getting close to being a million dollar rocket here. There we go, we are past a million. 11 tons also does not seem too reasonable, uh, too unreasonable, I mean, for. The payload capacity of this, which is not much. The thrust weight ratio of the upper stage is a little bit low, though. Maybe we can't swing this much. Uh, two stages. Yeah, 10.8 ton rocket. We'll see what we end up in orbit with. Now yeah, we'll stage that separately. Okay, well, we're on Delta. <laughs> I'll call it Delta anyway, even though it's nothing like a Delta. Still better than calling everything rocket or launcher. Intent. Okay, 29 days to build this. And hopefully it'll serve as a permanent relay satellite. It's like a mini Starlink, except it doesn't have to serve like millions of people or anything. Oh, well I think we still need the Wisp antennas because our relay antenna of course, it's not open yet. Yeah, we'll need the whip antennas. Uh, let's roll back. So, again, they're rotated wrong. Ah, two of those. I hope staging doesn't break them, though. Okay. Well, at least we'll have it on the pad. I'll save this like that and also save edits. Four more hours to add those on. Okay, well this time we need to line up with the intended orbit. Oh, we're not too far away. Does it sort of show... oh, it's going up. Um, uh, hmm. <laughs> Technically we shouldn't do this, but we'll, we'll, we'll go up actually. We should wait until nighttime and launch, but... It's not very scenic, is it? But yeah, if we wanted to go south, 
We'd also have to do a dog leg from Cape Canaveral too. If we were going to be totally legit about it. Okay. So we're not going to be totally legit about it. Right, we're just going into a 90 degree orbit. Crawl up, SAS on. No SAS. Um, right, I forgot that unit. Um, we could cheat and use smart ASS for that, but all right, I'll I'll roll back and put the SAS unit in. We'll be honest. Yeah, it didn't seem like rolling back changed our and rec the so-called recovery screen. Uh, did not change the amount of funds, so that seems to be all right. Okay, so what we need to do is add the star tracker to... And I shouldn't have the panels out. Those would probably break, huh? Mm okay. Control... Magnet Torker... No, star tracker. Magnet Torker could have been good, but we've got the RCS on the stage anyway, so... Okay, we've got a star tracker, and this time let's close the panels. I sure hope we get better fairings later. Okay, save there, and save. Okay, now we have comms, SAS on, throws up, and SAS. And so, we, we uh, are still at the right time? No, of course not. We're at completely the wrong time. Okay, uh, we'll have some eastward tendency anyway at the start so throttle up SAS is on ignition oh that's that fairing is not supposed to be there and launch somewhat more normal looking rocket somewhat and we want heading zero basically I haven't configured all my mech jeb displays Yeah, those... I'll do that later. For now, the thing in the corner there is sorta of good enough, even though we don't have the time to apoapsis and periapsis. Magjeb will display those even though it shouldn't. We should probably lean a little bit west. Negative heading, hmm. In order to correct our current eastward Velocity due to the rotation of the Earth. Uh, we'll do fairings after staging. Pre-activating RCS. Serious G-forces and separation. And ignition. And fairings. Just sort of a tub of a stage here. Minus two degrees right now. While we're in space, let's get the solar panels and antenna ready. Not that the sun is in a particularly good place for solar panels right now. One degree, I think we can just sort of point at it now. Oh, there are the Great Lakes. Hello. Okay. Well, we need to actually go to a higher orbit, so we'll just keep burning until 872. Okay, we could use RCS later to fix that a bit. Or right now. Nice to continue to have comms. Uh, through wallops, apparently. Let's go retrograde and try and just get to 872 exactly. Okay, and we want to point at the sun, so let's go sun... Down. Hopefully that won't knock our apoapsis too much. And persistent rotation. Relative rotation to the sun. And that requires SAS to be on, so. Okay, so hopefully that'll keep us nice and charged. Well, except on the nighttime side, of course. Now, will we have comms at Apoapsis? I'm hoping that we're still close enough to Australia on that side. We are draining electric charge. This boil off of liquid, uh, liquid oxygen, too. Okay. 
I think we'll have comms. It's a little bit tight. Okay, well, let's pay attention to if it is satisfied. Okay, it is satisfied. I can use RCS to get us a little bit rounder. We could go to a higher orbit if we wanted to. But maybe we'll get a contract to adjust it or something. I don't know if those are active. Okay, so we got that. We can transmit some science. Two, uh, still water. Let's see if we can hit another biome. Hmm, what other biomes could there be? Like shores? Tropics covers a whole bunch of stuff. Grasslands. I don't think we would have done grasslands. Mountains could be a thing. Somewhere there is the Rockies. Mountains! Okay, transmit data. Ooh, look at all that being used. Uh, oh, we just barely had enough. So with the relay antenna, please note, it takes a lot of electric charge. We just had enough. It takes like 600 for some reason. Okay, but we got both contracts fulfilled. We've got a relay satellite. It's pointed at the sun. All is well. Okay, back to Space Center. Now we've got 197,000. The tracking station upgrade costs 120,000. Mission control costs 60,000. Our rocket just now was just a million. You can see infrastructure costs a lot for this sort of thing. And then we would like to go to the moon. What's the advance for the basic lunar flyby mission? 52,000. So I'm going to pick up the lunar flyby and impactor. Uh, yeah, that's just saying you crash into it. That's fine. Uh, impactor. And do the tracking station upgrade. I won't do the mission control just yet. We'll see if just patch conics without the maneuver nodes will be good enough. And yeah, that I will save for next time. So that'll do it for me this time around and I'll say thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below and I'll see you next time.